bagi orang yang sedang diet sangat bagus because it's a uh, there's no sugar it's all natural sugar tu tak ha rasa dia pun tak manis sangat um, dan mengenyangkan <laughs> Hi, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Rita. Um, okay, I think I'll just do a short introduce, introduction for myself and why we are here today. Okay, my name is Rita. I'm the co-owner of Anytime Fitness Sunway Putra Mall. I'm also the co-owner and co-founder of uh, Good Fit, which is a wellness platform. And I'm also a partner at AWET. Yeah, so Everyone has been asking me, you know, what, what is Awe actually? So Awe actually is a Malay colloquial word uh, that um, it describes the, the lady tribe in Malaysia. Okay, so it's a colloquial word, Awe. So, you know, you know, when ladies pass by, I say, oh, there's an Awe here, there's an Awe there, you know. So uh, Awe actually is a lady. And um, in a deeper context, what we want to highlight about Awe is uh, actually, it's absolute woman empowerment. Okay, and K is for Kuala Lumpur. So, if we have any other venues, we'll, you know, let's go Kluang or anywhere else. So, yeah, um, basically, our work is about that. But for today, um, 
Awet would like to highlight on more important issues. And our topic, uh, I think it's a very hot topic right now, is about being resilient. Okay, so on today's first ever Awet virtual event, uh, we would like to highlight on mental resilience. So uh, I just want to ask you guys, what do you know about being resilient or what is resilience? No, in, in the current situation that we are in right now, we know MCO 3.0, you know, um, people are trying to survive. And I think it's more to being sustainable. It's your ability to, to, um, to respond or to withstand or to recover readily from a crisis or disrupt, disruptive process. So what we are going through right now is, is, it's disruptive to our normal daily life, what we do, where we go, who we see. So um, I think it's really hard for us to adapt. But I know that if we, you know, all of us, kita jaga kita, we can, we can succeed. Okay, so I know, I know it's a very heavy topic, but um, rest assured that it'll be fun. You know, it's, it's very santai. Um, don't worry that, you know, it, it, it's going to be engaging because uh, why? Because we have five amazing speakers, five awesome ladies that we have today. Um, okay, I think I'll just introduce uh, in general. First up, we have Miss Anita Jacobson. She is the Managing Director of Alpine Group Services Syndrome Bahad. I've met her personally. I've talked to her personally. I've interviewed her personally. So, um, we'll get, we, we're going to have a good chat with her and the topic that we have with her today is, is quite powerful, which is the power of an agile mindset for the businesswoman. Okay, uh, and then uh, next in line would be uh, Miss Alia or as you know, she is fondly known as Kak Nga, which is the founder of Awas Malaysia. And uh, yeah, she will talk about more on trauma and shame. Okay. After Kak Alia, sorry, after okay, Kak Nga or Kak Alia, we will have Miss Aruna Santapan. She is a, a sports psychology officer. Okay, this is going to be interesting because, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of sports issues um, that, can, that can't happen right now. So we want to know on, on her side of, you know, on her end, how, um, how the sports industry or, you know, how, how do they be resilient you know so the topic is the resilience mindset on how to bounce back okay and after miss aruna will be miss wani rd she's a writer and performer and also the advocate and founder of mrkh malaysia and mrkh Nusantara. this is also going to be quite a deep topic something more personal i would say so um you know the topic will be the art of letting go and letting god which uh, i think she would share more on a personal level. So I can't wait to talk to her as well. And finally, we have Miss Himar. Uh, and she is the founder of Glamour and Purpose, an international public speaker. She is also an NASM personal trainer and a sports nutritionist. And uh, you know, I've interviewed her personally as well. She's such a warm and, and nice lady. And today she'll be talking about yoga breathing exercises for mental health. Okay, so I think I don't want to waste any time because um, it's, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's crunch time that we want to know um, what they, uh, about their thoughts, what they think about um, what's happening right now and how to be resilient, you know, how to have a resilient mindset or, you know, mental resilience. Okay, so I would like to invite uh, Miss Anita Jacobson. Hi, Anita. How are you? Great. Looking forward to it. Okay, great. Um, you know, I think it's been a while that I, I last saw you. You're still looking fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, Anita, um, you are the managing director of a huge company that handles, um, I would say, large exhibitions. And it's not those, you know, small, small scale exhibitions, you know. It's, it's, it deals with government and a lot of other organizations as well. So what is it, you know, the, when you say the power of an agile mindset for the businesswoman, wh why do women actually need an agile mindset, especially in this challenging business era? 
Right. Thank you, Rita. Um, uh, well, let me just correct you. Not a huge company. <laughs> uh, 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 huge in, in, in uh, I think, uh, huge in ambition. Uh, yes. Uh, huge in uh, um, uh, doing uh, what's best for the members in the team. Yes. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, uh, yes, I think uh, one of the important things about having uh, a powerful, agile mindset. First, let's just talk about what I mean. This whole word agile. I think. I think. I we we need to do a bit of a uh, about a, a, a simple definition of what agile is. I I actually looked up. I went into Google and I was like, okay, what does agile? And I thought, you know what? Hang that. I'm just going to give you my what I think the word agile to me means. Um, I think in simpler terms, because I'm not the psychologist here. We have two psychologists here, I think, in the panel. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. Nine, yeah? So, uh, uh, but what I would say uh, as a woman, as a businesswoman, is that um, agility is actually uh, having the power to be able to adapt and change. Okay? Right. Uh, but doing that change, uh, not as a top-to-bottom sort of bureaucracy style, I'm the boss, you just change. No, it... it that is out of the window. So I think the, the concept of, of uh, having an agile uh, business is being able to work as a team, to respect each other. So the boss respects the staff, the staff, you know, we work as a team to go through this change together. Uh, and I have a personal experience uh, on that. And that's why I chose to talk about this today uh, and to keep it as light uh, as possible, if I may, Rita. Uh, and and I want to share that, uh, yes, Rita is right, we, 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 we are actually or, uh, not event organizers like annual dinners and stuff, no. We are actually doing very high level um, involving government, working, partnering with the government uh, to run uh, very important events. Uh, one of it is actually coming up, it's called Cyber Security. Okay? Mm. So... Uh, uh, what happened is uh, this event is supposed to be a physical event. Now we talk about organizing events. Uh, forget about forget this virtual thing for just for a minute, okay? So uh, and I can see Aruna going because you know she can relate <laughs> with Olympics and all. But uh, what happened is this is supposed to be a physical. It's supposed to be an exhibition with boots, and then you're supposed to have running parallel conference where people come in person, wear lanyards, have badges, you know. Yeah. It's supposed to be face-to-face -face events. And uh, when we launched this event, which was launched from scratch, uh, it was two years ago. And it was supposed to be March last year. Got me? Right. March last year when <laughs> what happened? When COVID, suddenly we were like, what is this, you know? And so with the government, we decided, okay, tak boleh, we have to postpone. Okay, we postpone to June. So confident. June, yeah, we can get over this, lah, no problem, you know? So June. And then came uh, April, and it just kept getting worse. And uh, then we sat down with the government and said, no, looks like this is a bigger monster than we thought. So we have to postpone again to next year. So can you imagine all that work, everything that we put? Yeah. We are reaching the 30 meters. I'm going to relate to Aruna. 30 meters of the finishing line, and then <laughs> start back, start back, start back, go back, go back, go back, you know? So, so all this cost a lot of for us as a leader, for me as, you know, I have a, a male business partner who is also my boss, but me as the one running the company, you know, I, 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 I took a hit. You know, I, 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 I broke down, you know, when I was told that we have to, to, to reschedule again, you know. Uh, and to make matters worse, the team members, the staff, they also broke down. But my initial thing was, what, what's the initial thing you do when, when you suddenly been said, oh, everybody has to work from home? Oh my God, you have to work more. You have to prove to me that you're doing your work, you know, and, and it was all wrong because, the, you know, we didn't respect each other. There was no respect. Okay, I didn't respect them as the fact that this also, oh, just because I'm the owner, I'm the boss, so this only, this this whole uh, 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 COVID pandemic only affects me. No, it affects them too. They have their own issues, you know, to deal with. And 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 that's where we broke down, you know, when, I, when, we, when, we, when we didn't, when we, when we didn't have that powerful mindset, we, we, were not, we were not open to change. You know, we were not open that we need to change and adjust accordingly. You know, we were just depressed. <laughs> that, you know, that we are, ah, you know and, 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 and so long story short, uh, what happened is I lost a, member, a few members of staff. 
I lost a few members of staff because they got frustrated, you know, uh, rather than me helping them emotionally dealing with, with the changes and working together and getting their opinion. Uh, I was, you know, like telling them, you know, let's do this and, you know, using my pressure. So that was all wrong. So I've changed that. Okay. And that's when I, I, I started to, 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 to look into this whole agile mindset. So the agile mindset is, to me is basically respect is number one. First, sit down with everybody. Okay, respect each other's feelings, okay? Listen to what they have to say and together get their opinion and then together we move. We move and we adapt to the change, okay? And I, I'm so happy to say, uh, you know, we've postponed, I don't know how many times already, <laughs> almost to a point uh, that it doesn't affect us anymore. So it's like, oh, we're going we're gonna to reschedule this. And everybody's like on board. No one's like, oh my God, oh no, no. Everybody's on board. It's like, you know, I have my, my, my head of marketing, Honey, uh, who, who just like, okay, like, so we need to do this. We're going to change. We're going to reschedule. Let's get the memos out. Let's get, so everybody's, because we got them on board, we respected their feelings and they respect our feelings, you know. I'm not saying it's bed of roses now, but, you know, but it's so much better. Uh, and just to share with everybody, the event got postponed again. <laughs> Thanks to oh uh, 3.0 and lockdown. So, the, 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 the big change now from a physical event, we have decided to do a fully virtual event. Okay? Uh, and and it's, it's, it's so strenuous because you come up with a program, one program, meant for physical. So now all that out the window, you know? All the work for the past four months is out, almost out the window and we have to re-do. Uh, so that's why it's so important as a leader, as the one taking charge that you have to have, you have to embrace this agile mindset that don't be afraid of the change. Don't, uh, don't be, uh, you know, don't, don't get upset, uh, you know, that you have, you have, you have to embrace it. So th th this is what I would say from a light. I can go on and on and on, you know, but, but I think you have a few more questions for me. So I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really understand when you say about change because change is the only constant, right? Yes. That's what people say. Change yes. is the only constant and we have to learn how to adapt how to pivot, how to be flexible, especially in times like these. And what what uh, interests me is that um, you're the leading lady, you know, because now we're in our way, we're talking about women empowerment and you have a guy boss with you, but you take the lead. Um, uh, I, I just wonder how is it that you balance between both extremes of the emotional side and also that mindset of uh, you know, making this decision and being resilient. How, how do you actually balance that? Oh, good question. At first, when I, I was thinking, how am I going to answer this? Okay, well, I'm going to say something that I think all the ladies are going to smile when I say this, okay? We are entitled to get emotional. Let's put it that way, is what I would say. <laughs> okay? Crying Agreed. is not a weakness. Crying is a strength, okay? And that's what I'm going to say to everybody right here is that let it out ladies cry it out you know just take it empty yourself of that emotion who says that you cannot cry and you just because you are the business lady okay or 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 the mother at home that you cannot break down and cry and just because you break down and cry it doesn't mean that you are weak no no actually i think this is the this is the the power key if you ask me because i have experienced where I just break down, I let it out, and I told myself, it's okay, I, I can spare a day to be down, to just, just let it go, and that's what I did, okay? But you know what? The moment I let it out, almost the split second, right, from the, all that bengkak, mata bengkak, kan? <laughs> all that, suddenly, I suddenly felt better. Suddenly, I have clarity. Suddenly, I know what I need to do. I have the solution, you know? So... And I think this is something that I want to share with everybody here, uh, all the women. And, and, you know, women have always been accused uh, by men, you're always so emotional. Yeah, it's a strength. It's not a weakness. It's because we have these emotions that we are able to understand people. We are able to understand our children. Perangai, perangai. We are able to understand our mother, our father kat rumah, uh, our in-laws. Rita, I think you can relate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. 
<laughs> yes, okay. And and you 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 somehow able to to you know listen to every one of them, understand all their different peranga, you know, because you have that emotions, you have the empathy. It's inbuilt in us women, the motherly instinct, you know. And I believe. Uh, uh, how we uh, we we manage to run our households, okay, is how we manage our team. So going back to the to the to the question, uh, I would say is clear yourself out, have a day, not too long though, okay, <laughs> time is factor, but have that day and tell yourself I'm just gonna cry it out, I don't care, I, you know, just let it all out, okay. But and the best is not to do it alone, can I think it's always good to have. Uh, to have a friend that you can trust, right? That you can actually let it out to. Someone that's going to just hold you and say, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Betul, betul, betul. You know, and you, you know, you curse all the, the bad words come out and you know, and, and you don't want, and you know, just want to let it all out. And then the person's going, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 you're right, yeah. Okay, sama, 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 sama. You know, you, you need that person. <laughs> so it could be your husband. Okay, it could be your son. For me, in some instances, it was my son. Uh, it could be your mother. It could be. It could be. It could be your your boss or your partner, where you just let it out, you know, and then you felt better. And then I tell you, ladies, you can rule the world after that. You just know exactly what to do. Right. I believe that um, when when you face with adversity, uh, for myself, usually I'll I'll absorb. You know, you, you need you need that space to absorb that pain, that feeling. And when you decide that you want to bounce back, I think that's the moment that you know that. You are resilient, actually. You know that you are able to be flexible. You you have the courage to move forward, and you know when you be resilient, you are able to sustain yourself better, right? Correct. So absolutely, yeah. I I you know it's 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 a wonder that us women we can actually balance so many things out, segment a lot of things here. That's right. And, you know, play that role of that um, maternal instinct side and you know as a boss side as a leader it's not easy i would say um uh, i i have my own business so i know that you know handling a business is tough but handling people is tougher yes so, correct yeah i mean um okay back to the events that you know being resilient uh how do you actually shift from the physical kind of um you know um platform to a more virtual platform, you know, in, in terms of that, that resiliency, I would say. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. Um, right. So, uh, we, we, we sat down, okay, and then we told ourselves, right. So, what we need to do is something that my my partner, my, my, my I have to say male partner, yeah, because all the ladies here, yeah, so male <laughs> partner said is, guys, uh, I don't know how you guys are going to do it, okay, uh, but whatever it is, my directive satu je. Uh, just make sure that uh, you, uh, 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 what, what's the word for it? You, you, you ensure that the people who are going to participate in the physical event has a nearest experience uh, in the virtual as it was physical. Okay? Uh, and this is where we have to be agile. Uh, this is where we have to, to, to put in our agile thinking. Okay? So open your mind and think, okay? Like if, if for example, for example now, uh, 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 like the exhibition. So the physical exhibition is actually uh, a booth, right? An actual booth. And then I go in, I visit, I see you, I say hi, we talk. So what happened is, thanks to Virtual Life, our sponsor, uh, they actually created a, what they call a virtual platform. So exhibitors or participants can actually have a virtual booth. So it's actually a 2D booth design. And on that booth, you can actually put your branding, your video. And the best part of all, you can have video chat like this with people who visit you at the booth. Okay. Mm. And, and, and to make that more, of course, again, agile thinking, we cannot be promoting a virtual event like how we promoted uh, the physical event. It's different. You're, you're dealing with a virtual audience. So we have to, to look at the marketing. So we have to do a lot more uh, digital marketing using Google, Facebook, okay, and things like that. And, and telling the exhibitors that we have to do preset meetings, okay, and then saying to, uh, saying to, to, to the uh, clients that 
actually, in a way, this virtual uh, event uh, setup is more effective than the physical. Because right. in physical, you you cannot like have a preset who's going to come and see you, right? People walking right. by, you grab them, you meet, right? But with the virtual, it's such that that you actually have the visitors setting up appointments in advance. So the exhibitor is like, wow, for this day, I've got all these meetings set up. So this is where the agile thinking has to come in as a team. Yeah. Right. Right. I think uh, also uh, besides your experience, your vast experience handling um, uh, exhibitions, and also I think it's it's con continuous knowledge, continuous continuously adding new knowledge to yourself because you know we, we just need to adapt uh you know some 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 companies might be stuck in that that um old format of yes you know ha ha having a physical proof and all but nowadays you know you just have to be fast and you have to yes. think 10 steps ahead uh, yes. especially in the field that you're in so i think it's amazing that what you're doing right now and yeah i think um you know it brings it still brings people together anyway yes true right yes correct that's right yeah so what would what would uh what would be the best advice as a leading lady as the woman on top on you know um being resilient in business and especially in these trying times this covid era what would your best advice be don't be afraid of change do not be afraid of what's going on out there because you are the human being. You are the one that can control. So always be in control and do not be afraid of the change. That's my advice. And don't forget to cry. <laughs> we are all allowed to cry. Don't yes. worry. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's, that's really um, a very wise advice. Thank you so much. I feel like I'm talking to my girlfriend, as I always tell you. Yes. You know, we, always yeah, fun. You, you, yeah, we, we need to let it out sometimes because um, uh, sometimes people do not know things that we go through. Um, we'll just leave the personal side, you know, personal side aside. But um, on a more professional uh, level, it's it's not easy dealing with so many things, you know, because you're dealing with people's livelihood. You are, you know, managing um, manpower, resources, and, you know, just to balance everything, it's not easy. So, yeah, thank you so much, Anita. That was great. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> okay, I think um, we have more speakers coming up. Next up, we have Kak Nga, uh, fondly known as Kak Nga or Miss Alia. Uh, we are going into a more, I think it's a more personal, it's, a, it's more on a personal journey, on a more personal level. So, without further ado, I would like to invite Kak Nga, the founder of AWAS Malaysia. And okay, guys, AWAS stands for Awareness Against Suicide. It is a space created to end uh, stigma and to promote healing, okay? And it's for all individuals impacted by suicide. So, I, I like the fact that, you know, how they promote it is uh, they aim to transform pain into purpose one post at a time. I think that's that is something so... So profound and so it's really deep. So I think I don't want to waste any time. Uh, and I would like to invite Kak Nga uh, talking about uh, more on trauma and shame. Okay, Kak Nga, maybe you want to introduce yourself a bit to everyone? Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Awe, um, for having me. This is, um, it's such an honor to be here. I am Kak Nga, uh, the founder and advocate for AWAS, Awareness Against um, Suicide. And uh, it's a, it's basically, uh, I advocate for mental health awareness and suicide awareness. I know these are topics that, you know, we're not quite comfortable with, especially as Malaysians, you know, um, uh, mental health is something we, you know, these are whispered words, even suicide, you know, it's not something we want really enjoy talking about but it's 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 very close to my heart um, i'm really passionate about it one perhaps because my background is in psychology um uh, a disclaimer i'm not a psychologist by the way um i used to be a mental health uh, professional but i quit my job and then um no longer uh, and now um you know uh, life has its way of uh, uh making us uh, turning us into you know 
God work, works in mysterious ways, so I'm back uh, in this field now, uh, not as a mental health professional, but um, I'm here to advocate for mental health and suicide awareness, simply because I am a suicide loss survivor. Um, I used to be very sad, and just like uh, Anita said earlier, you know, we can cry. I've cried five, six, seven years already, um, uh, you know, dealing with trauma and shame. Uh, it's It was awful, um, but I, I guess it's al already time now. Um, 2019, I decided to go to um, see the doctor and get checked out and you know i it's you know um i uh, because of the the pain of suicide loss um of a loved one um you know i developed anxiety clinical anxiety we're talking about here and and also depression you know but um i feel like it, it's been a long journey let me tell you i've cried and i've been embarrassed and i've been guilty hurt and in pain but um one thing for sure um why i'm here why i feel like i should turn up today uh for our for everyone for all the ladies um for everyone actually um it's to let everyone know that uh, mental health is really important you know um it's not we don't talk about suicide we don't talk about our struggles very much right um um but it's something that is it's absolutely necessary uh, when it comes to you know uh, trauma and shame, it's people don't people are not comfortable talking about it, and um, you know people will never truly understand um, things that that we go through as a suicide loss survivor. So I feel I feel that like it's necessary out there. When I was struggling, right, um, uh, many many years ago, about five, six, ten years ago, uh, five, six, seven years ago, um, there was no help, there was no support. There was no, um, uh, I tried to uh, reach out for help, but there was none and I was really struggling. And um, I was to the point of, I became, you know, suicidal myself and it was really scary, I felt. And because there was no dialogue, you know, people don't talk about this. I feel like, you know, this must be, you know, this must be talked about. And although, yeah, it sounds like I'm the bringer of gray clouds, you know, but to be honest, like that, I've um, through this hours, like I've, I've through we've um, uh, managed to get the people through this platform. We've managed to get the suicide loss survivors. They don't really want to talk about. Um, sometimes uh, it's a support group, uh, but um, it, you know people are uh, sometimes are uncomfortable talking about it. But um, but. Uh, in a way, uh, after a while, like, you know, after setting up the group, uh, after getting people, you know, meeting up people, um, um, I'm trying to help people who are suicidal also, you know, and um, it, all these things, um, it's, it's, it's such a journey, um, uh, even like a MCO, talk about MCO, maybe we can't really say like, um, Okay, maybe we can say um, suicide loss is a trauma, right? But but uh, people who lost their jobs, like MCO, for instance, it's still a trauma. It's still a trauma. It's not for us to say, oh, um, um, you know, or rape cases are trauma uh, cases, uh, but uh, losing job is not trauma. You know, people who are trauma, even like um, LRT, people who were in the yeah. accident recently, right? Um, they too can be dealing with trauma. So, and the problem with trauma is once people um, are traumatized, you know, they they are str they struggle, they feel shame, they feel embarrassed um, because they feel like they're not, they cannot function sometimes, you know. And so, I feel like these are the things that we, you know, we need to highlight and talk about and um, shed light upon, you know. So. Um, yeah, so that's what I do uh, in ours. Um, it's a long journey still. Um, it's it's actually a a, a, um, um, a platform, um, uh, not an NGO, uh, but we are trying um, to reach out um, even international uh, people who are in the uh, suicide loss survivors uh, in other countries are also reaching out to us and saying, you know, thank you for your post and all that. So. Um, we are new. Uh, we just started uh, 2019. Um, yeah, COVID last year, actually. Um, 
um but uh we're getting there slowly and um being invited now to speak about it and um it's not it's not easy to find a, a suicide loss survivor uh, to be honest um we, our our support group has only five people um but these five people are really um supportive of each other and you know we you know there's a lot of things that we share and confide in so yeah right um uh for me is is a really new subject is a really deep subject um i i don't um fortunately i i do not come from uh, any of that background so on a personal level i wouldn't feel um how you feel you know so um is it is it is it why is this the reason why people feel that it's hard to reach out or they feel it's like a taboo subject or it's it is just a stigma that you know people sometimes people just judge or jump to conclusion before they even reach out so i i think it's it's not easy from your side i i know it's not easy from my side either because um again mental resilience you need to you go through that trauma you go through that shame and to to stay to stay sane or to stay strong you need to have that mental resilience right so um from your own experience um can we actually see the signs of trauma someone is going through and how actually do we assist them you know in the early stages okay rita look at me chomela here <laughs> Can you tell can you tell if I'm a suicide loss survivor or a trauma survivor? No, no one can tell, right? Um right. yeah, it's the same. It's the same as um any other survivors, you know, uh, be it um sexual assault, be it um uh whatever, whatever kind of uh, things that people go through, um you can't tell really. Um from the face, you can't tell there's no signs. Uh, people just go on um to be honest for a long time. I pretended like I was okay you know um a long long time I was even um uh, running business I opened up a cafe in Tamanton by the way uh not too far away not too far from you guys uh, I guess um so uh yeah I opened up a cafe I was running for running the cafe for almost 5 years and I was doing fine you know I was I worked myself um you know i worked really hard that i didn't have time to 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 worry or or cry, you know to to cry too much you know I, i'll cry yeah. i'll cry in you know in the bedroom or whatever but but i i don't spend too much time thinking about it right but um yeah you know uh, life goes on uh, i pretended and all that um but after a while when another grief hits if that's the time when uh this whole trom this whole thing you know erupt it erupted like a volcano you know and i feel it's all, it's also the same i cannot speak for everyone i feel um i'm sure trauma you can't see the signs it doesn't say on the face or on the forehead but um one thing for sure is if it has developed into anxiety into a, a mental health condition or mental health disorders that's when you can pick up even but then even though even though you know people let's say people struggle with sleep you know some of the symptoms of trauma trouble with sleep flashbacks um um you know um they cannot sleep uh, they cannot concentrate they cannot focus at work mara mara you know anger issues or you know um you know all these things but um uh, still you can't identify you can't say it's trauma you know um, only that person will know that you know um whatever the things that they are going through and all that right so the point is here is to reach out you know it's it's okay to it's not like uh, anita uh, anita said earlier right it's it's okay to cry it's okay to not be okay um especially during mco right now 3.0 i feel a lot of people are not okay you know and it's okay to not be okay we don't have i don't have the answers uh, awas befrienders uh, your psychiatrist your therapist no one has the answers to your to your to your questions you know to your to your dilemma you know um, but sometimes we just have to go through it you know and knowing that other people are with us or knowing that all you ladies are you know supporting are behind us knowing that you have a support um support system your family you know whoever you need to identify this these people right so it's it's very important um to know uh, the signs um 
even though you don't see the signs of trauma but it's important to know you know what are the things that if it's you if you are not functioning anymore that's the time when you need to reach out for help you know or start a dance class or breathing class or whatever you know but reach out that's the that's the most important thing i feel yeah right right okay um since we are in um the awet platform uh, mm -hmm. uh absolute women empowerment i i'm just curious that uh you know is there is there any difference between uh, ladies and uh, men's level of trauma or shame? I mean, it's just, yeah. Okay, to be honest, I feel like, um, I think Malaysians, uh, I, I, I can't speak for everyone, but uh, I think um, we all have this thing about um, boys cannot cry, boys must men up, right? Boys shouldn't be showing emotions. Uh, it, sometimes it's okay for boys to to be violent but not okay to be emotional you know we have this this kind of um notion right i think uh, even among uh, uh, malaysians whatever 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 race um um they uh but um it it is a it is it is a problem i i feel for men um because it's it's harder for them to express themselves and uh, because of that women i feel uh, must play uh, our roles too you know um we can't say we can't tell as moms right i'm a mom of two we can't tell our boys or we can't tell our our siblings you know or oh, men up don't cry you know you shouldn't cry and things like that we have to be the um you know the support system right um and 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 get them to express and help them to express uh, it's okay for men to cry it's okay if, if it's okay for girls to cry it's also okay for men to cry uh, we are all uh, humans after all right so yeah right uh, i think that's a very good advice um you know some i think sometimes people they do not know what to do or how right. to how to reach out uh but i think coming from yourself it it sounds that um, you know, it seems that all of us sometimes we just need to to in Malay they say ambil berat. You know, you, you you see that someone is you know sometimes some people can 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 just act a bit differently and you know is I think it's just a matter of reaching out, right? Tapi Rita, um, uh, let me share with you. Um, um, I had to learn it the hard way, unfortunately. Even though even though I'm a psychology background kononya. Um, uh the signs uh i saw this i saw my loved one struggling you know emotionally and all that but yeah you know, sometimes we dismiss right we tend to dismiss and say ala you know like uh or you know teenagers or you know you know we tend to do that you know so uh it's really important it's really important to recognize the signs and uh, take them seriously uh so uh you know it doesn't matter if it's if it's to us we feel uncomfortable even if i feel like even if we can't handle it like we we think like you know sometimes mothers and son or whatever whatever your relationship is you know if we can't handle it like you know pass to someone who's professional or you know or aunties or uncles or teachers whoever that are comfortable in dealing with it and it's really important yeah because right. once it's too late can once it's too late then um nothing can be done and uh, you know i hope my message is clear that you know don't wait for it to become too late and um, to regret and yeah and then you will have to deal with trauma and shame that is not pleasant at all you know it takes a whole lifetime to heal so right yeah right okay i uh, i think that's um that's a really good advice for all of us uh thank you so much kak nga um uh we we need to go on to our next psychologist right now uh, thank you so much for sharing your personal journey um you know you. what you went through is it's very insightful and very refreshing right okay so thank you so much again Kak Nga. i would go to uh, miss aruna santapan right now also a psychologist uh pegawai psychology sukan or sports psychology officer and her topic is, is also quite interesting, which is the resilience mindset on how to bounce back. Okay, um, Ms. Aruna, are you there? Yeah, I am. I am. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, how are you? you today? And, yeah, I'm very, very, very good. Very good. Thank you so much. And actually, thank you for inviting me to be part of the very powerful speaker, actually. Like when I'm hearing everyone's stories and everything, I feel overwhelmed, you know, like it's great that everyone is actually going through something, but it's the platform that we can speak about it. So congratulations once again, and I'm really honored to speak about it as well. 
So maybe I can, because of my experience and stuff, maybe I can just share a little bit, you know, the insights of what's going on and everything. Yes. Right. Ple- pleasure is ours. We, we are honoured as well to have you here and the rest of the speakers. So maybe you want to tell everyone uh, a bit about your background and, you know, what you do on a normal uh, a normal basis. Do you want to share with all uh, of okay. us? Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, okay, of course, uh, all of you know that my name is Aruna. I'm currently working as a sports psychology officer in National Sport Institute, or well-known as the Institute Skandagara ISN. Um, I also serving our current uh, national hockey, uh, karate, and um, anything shooting team. All right, I'm working with them now, and also other elite uh, athletes as well. And I'm also a former athlete by myself. I played about 15 years in netball. Uh, I, I won my first SEA game medal when I was 14. All right, and then they're on the schools. Uh, and um, I also uh, played two times World Cup, being a captain, uh, back a lot of awards, uh, being a back shooter. Uh, national, uh, Asian, and even world level. And I finished uh, my uh, graduations in master's in exercise and sport psychology in Europe. So that is a Amazing. bit about me. So at least it might give me a little bit idea of like talking about resilience because this is something that we really need now. I think that, that's my personal opinion as well. So, yes. Right, right. Um, wow, it's amazing that, you know, your, your, your success and your, you know, all the things that, all the achievements that you went through, I mean, like, wow, is, and I, okay, being, being an athlete yourself and now as a psychologist in, you know, in, in the sports uh, section, I mean, um, MCO 3.0 right now, okay. Um, is, it, is it 3 or 4? If you get confused <laughs> now, is it 3 or 4? <laughs> I, I would say it's 3.0. Okay, all right. We'll okay, be much to say the 3.0. Yeah, it doesn't matter okay. which point O it right. is, but uh, you know, okay. the sports industry is is, I would say, suffering. So, from your opinion, I mean, to have that resilient mindset to 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 sustain right now, I mean, it's I I don't know where to start because I myself I own a gym, so I understand that you know people can come to work out. People can come to get themselves healthy, you know, um, even though we set very strict SOPs for them to come, they have to set their time to come. We sanitize the gym, you know, every hour. We make sure that they wipe the equipments. And, you know, you have never heard of any gym clusters um, as yet. So, you know, from, from your end, what is your thoughts on this and, you know, as an athlete, as an ex-athlete, and what you're doing right now, how how do you stay resilient? All right, okay. It's actually a, a wasp idea about saying it. So let's say, I, I think I would like to direct our audience again to understand what is resilience all about before we go to the... Of course, everyone's are going through something, right? So being resilient is something like, if I we remember Kak Anita and Kak Anna was telling that, you know, connect to people, do that, you know, get help and stuff and everything, right? It's, it's, the, it's the way of we are telling our mind is that the ability for us to cope or to recover quickly from the difficulties. And I believe that every, at a single point, either it's the smaller or the worse, everyone might have gone through a difficulty in our life. So resilience is something that is the ability for us to come back. We bounce back after we this one. But the whole idea is how much do we know about how to resilience back? How do we want to bounce back? That's the most important question. Do we enough, uh, enough equipment or enough tools or enough strategy to do that? Because I believe, we are not saying that. We are believe uh, it's kind of a society that which is we are very accepting. We are somehow like kind of following. We say, okay, let's, let's be, uh, we kind of say like, like we have that kind of tendency. Okay, let me radar. So if you are going to bring back to the, to the sport industry, yes, because they have a, a busy schedule. To be honest, athletes have a very busy schedule. And then people are coming to the sports and everything. Those who are in this industry, it's always are ongoing and everything. And now it's kind of like a break. Suddenly, like, everything stops. Uh, what should I do? What what will I, I, I focus on and everything? So this is something that which is resilience minds bounce back. It's already there, but now we are like kind of like re-emphasizing again what should we do in step by step again. All right? So that is the whole idea about resilience. But in my point of view, so to build a resilient mindset is all about being aware and practice, all right? 
like if you can relate to yourself as well, you are a gym owner as well. You believe that people who come into your gym have an intention. They come to your gym like saying that okay, I want to get, lo- I want to lose weight, I want to build my physique, I want to be look gooding, uh, anything. There should be a reason for them to come to your gym, right? right. So that is intentionally happen for them to come to the gym, and they one thing they always love to give them is time. When it comes to physical, they love to give time. They say it's okay. I'm going to take okay. I'm going to tr- give three months of window for me to lose weight. I'm going to uh, give a six month to uh, you know get a six apps, a six six uh, six uh, apps and sign of that, right? Yeah, all right. And then, but when it comes to a mental or when it comes to a mind, we forget to give a time. That is the whole idea that when we always see, we forget to give a time to our mind to practice, to be to be mindfully practice what we are we actually preaching. Okay. For like for Kanita was telling, it's okay to find, it's okay to cry and everything. So we want when we know that cry is one of the coping mechanisms, we want to do it. Not to say that we are ashamed about it. We want to do it because we know that it's useful for us. For example, all right. So resilience is always come back to whether you have a grow mindset or fixed mindset. This is something that is interesting. Always love to talk. Are you perceive this situation as something challenging, or are you perceive this opportunity? This situation as an opportunity so that's the two situations i'm going through something that is something happening it's beyond my control but am i perceiving that as a challenging or am i perceiving that as opportunity so this is between the grow and fixed mindset so you notice that people when they already step ahead which means they already embarrassed i mean sorry they already embrace the uh, grow mindset which means when they see that it's a situation they say okay this is something challenge it's okay i'm going to learn i'm going to move forward what the best thing that I can see from this. So this is something growth, all right? But when another mind is the fixed mindset where they will say that, oh, no, this is very challenging. I'm going to complain. This is not happy and everything. So there's a lot of negative things are coming in and they keep stressing and everything. So I ended up fixed mindset. So there's no more room to grow. And when they are in a fixed mindset, everything seems not pleasant for them. So it's very hard for them to adapt to the resilient mindset because in the first place, they couldn't even identify what is going on. So that is where you come back to awareness. You aware what happening, and then you practice what you're supposed to do. So this is a bit about what is resilient mindset, and of course, this is what we are preaching to our athletes as well, so that they know that you know it's difficult timeline, and it's 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 very very difficult situation. As we know, Olympic have been postponed for over a year, and we are talking about people training for almost complete five years in a high intensity. They they do everything only for that sport for five years and they need to just keep continue doing it and everything. So it's a bit uh, difficult time for them as well. So, yeah. Right, right. Uh, because um, when you say about you know, mental resilience, there are a lot of mental tools. It's just like when you have a computer, you can either use it for a good intention or a bad intention. So it's, I think the same goes for your mind, that whatever your mind um, conceives and believe, you will achieve. So, um, in that context, it's like, um, it's what your mind tells you, but again, it's not easy because, because of what we are going through. You know, like when you say athletes, they have been training for five years doing the things that they do and suddenly it's being postponed. Uh, you know, to, to keep yourself constantly motivated, I, I know it's not easy because uh, on a personal level, you know, even though I own a gym, you know, people say, uh, you know, you you will do fine. You will be slim, and you know it, it's not. I I go to the gym. I I always tell people that you know I, yes I go to the gym. But what happens at the gym uh is you know it's a different story. So, um to to to, to stay motivated and and you know constantly telling yourself that you know you must be strong and all this. It, I know it's not easy. So. Um, how do you actually, you know, for yourself as a psychologist, how do you, how do you keep athletes or for yourself for that, you know, for that matter, how do you keep, how do you keep them, how do you say, stay focused on, you know, don't, don't, don't lose your eyes on the prize, if I might say like that. How, how, how yes, would you? Yes, I understand. Okay, in terms of maybe in between, actually, I lost you. I couldn't hear what the whole sentence and everything, but <laughs> in, in terms of like, yeah, it's my bad. But in terms of uh, a little takeaway that I can give to our audience as well today is like, you know, uh, how, what are the tools and strategies that we can always use and remind ourselves? That is most important because actually it's something that we're always doing. It's something that always stay in, in, in our lifestyle. 
but it's just like we never pay attention. It's 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 kind of like we always say that it's okay. I'm I'm taking for granted, for example. It's okay. I have my family. I'm going to take for them for granted and everything. So I'm just going to say like a simple acronym so that people might can remember how we you know this one. It's just like it's a four component that which is you've been actually going through this your daily basis. It's uh it doesn't sound nice, but at least maybe you can remember for it. It's like C W P E. All right. C stands for connect. You connect with people like what uh, uh Anita and Ka Anga were saying. You get connect with people. You prioritize relationship. At this time of time, you need to know what are the important, what are the value of your relationship. So you know how to bounce back because then you know that who you need to go back to to ask for help, how to get connected. For example, this is a very good time. A lot of virtual things, a lot of online learning is happening. How many of us are taking time to go and learn something new, for example? So this is something that we want to use as, a, as I said, grow mindset. Okay? So you know what to do, then you will bounce back. This is how you, you, know, you get things to be done, all right? And then the second thing is like, you know, uh, wellness, you know, and of course, believe we have few speakers are going to talk about wellness as well, right? So wellness is something that we always again and again take it for granted, all right? Do you take care of yourself? Like we have a lot of mothers here, right? Do you take care of yourself first or before your, whoever, your loved one, all right? So this is always coming worse wise. When we are providing so much, the women especially, we forget to take care of ourselves. So yeah, always take true. care about yourself. You can do dancing, you can do anything. Make sure you get enough sleep, make sure you get enough nutrients, make sure you get everything. Then eventually you know how to bounce back. That, that is a simple thing that we want to know about it, all right? Practice mindfulness, all right? Yeah. Mindfulness is about like uh, Ka Anga and even uh, Ka uh, Anita, was, Anita was selling, right? Uh, you know, it's okay to cry now. It's okay to feel sad now. It's just a moment. So you are feeling what you're feeling now. But it doesn't carry you forever. It doesn't hold you forever. You are keep moving. For example, if like say I say to you, be set for the next 24 hours, can you do that? Like, don't don't think about any happiness. Just think about set for the next 24 hours. It's become tough now. It becomes difficult now. And then all, all of a sudden you are trying for, oh, let me go find something that's happy for me to do. We just diverting your mind, giving instructions and saying that, hey, you're not supposed to do this. Hey, you're supposed to do this. And automatically you're like, oh, okay, okay. I'm feeling set now, but it's okay. I can move on. It's kind of like telling yourself like it's okay, for example. All right, okay? And then, of course, during a difficult time, a stressful time, anything, you know, I'm, I'm not discriminating any any stress uh, level and everything. Everything is equally important. But what is avoid negative outlets? Like sometimes we tend to, like as I said, maybe we tend to take our life away. We tend to take a substance. We tend to take, become alcoholic. We tend to do a lot of things based on our uh, ruminations. We feel very bad about it. So these are the things. Being enough sleep, being with the good people, that might be something that you can avoid. See how it comes in the stages, right? All right? And then the third one is purpose. CWP. You always need to have a purpose. All right? Because especially in the during uh, MCO time now, maybe you lost your job. Maybe you don't know what. You, your schedule is completely different. All the time, last time, you stuck in the gym for two to three hours. But now you've got that two to three hours, you don't know what to do. And then you're running around your kids, you know, you're, you're screaming and everything. So everything is about purpose. Because last time you have a purpose, early morning you wake up, you drive your car, you go and sit in your desk. That's a purpose. Now there's no driving anymore. I'm sitting in the house. That's the purpose now. So you lose your sense. So get back to sense. Come back to your sense. Find your purpose while you're doing so. All right, okay? And then every time you ask yourself, like for example, what can I do about this problem? If you have a problem, of course, everyone will be talking about problem. What can I do with the problem now? Is it the problem too big? If the problem too big, how can I tuck it down? How can I break it down? All right, okay? So if I can break it down, then yes, you are fostering your resilient way of doing things. You're not seeing in a bigger picture. You're seeing in a smaller picture. What can I do now? All right, okay? And the last one, of course, uh, without forget, you have to have a goal and then definitely help others. Goal is something that always keeps you going. And don't say that I have a goal like Macam Orang Malaysia kan, every year, okay, I want to kuros, everyone, I want to kaya, I want to do that, I want to do this, but then, tak tahu gimana, we don't know where it goes and everything. So, goal must be very specific and you can achieve. And a simple way, a simple mantra that you can ask yourself every day. What can I do today? What the best that I can do? What can I do that I know today that can achieve the goal? That can help me to direction. Remember the keyword, what can I do the best? I do the best. What I know, do the best. If I know how to run, I run. If I know how to swim, I swim. If I know how to walk, I walk. If I know how to do business, I do business. If I know how to do reading, I do reading. Do what you are best at. Don't copy people. Then you become stressed and you become anxiety. 
serve, you see, that is how things come around and everything. And then, of course, help others. When you help others, actually, it's also for your own benefit. Because when you help others, your self-worth will increase. That's the most important. Because you know that you have capability to hand help to others. So you know that your worth is higher than what the rest is saying. Huh? And the last one is embrace, all right? Embrace healthy thoughts, all right? Okay, just take one step behind and see the perspective. Whether this perspective, of course, is stressful, it's difficult and everything. But how can I respond this situation to a different, different perspective, for example? If I'm always thinking in this way, what happens if I think in another way, for example? So just give a try. It's no harm of trying, right? We have ample of time now, all right, for everyone at home. And then as everyone is trying to highlight, accept the change. You must accept the change. Because accept the change is something that which is, is constant. It, it will always happen. If you start in somewhere like virtual, if you're a business holder, if you don't change to your virtual, you're somewhere. Those who are now, those who are doing online business, flourishing. You know, Shopee is the busiest, the, the highest, whatever uh, share market holder that they had. Netflix is one of the share market. Just everyone do the robot and give you, right? That kind of thing. So, you know, opportunities and kind of that. And then always have a hope that things are going to get better. Because hope will keep us going also. Being optimistic, being hope, and then you can move forward. And last, and last, learn from your past. If you already make a mistake, you have done something, learn from your past. All right, okay, so that you don't do the same mistake. So that is CWPE, all right? I hope our audience remember that. Get connected, wellness, all right? Find a purpose, you embarrass, uh, sorry, embrace your healthy thoughts. And if you say how to bounce back, sorry, okay? I just like, since I'm in the flow already. How you want to bounce back, remember these six steps. All right, okay? First, learn how to accept your mistakes. All right, okay, learn how to accept your mistakes. Analyze what went wrong. What went wrong? Okay, I have done something, but what went wrong? In terms of any way, you are an athlete, you are a business holder, you are whatever you are, it is. See what went wrong. All right, okay? You do it again, all right? Don't run away. You do it again, but do it differently. How can you do it differently? For uh, Anita K, uh, it's something like, okay, how can I do differently now for the virtual? All right, how can I do differently? This is something that you want to constantly think about it. Don't repeat the same mistakes. Because people tend to do the same mistake. You go and invest, and then you invest again, invest again, you are wasting your time. And then, this is something that we've never been taught, or maybe be reluctant about it. Be open for any results. Because you have to remember, we only can control the process. Can okay. anybody control the process? I can do, I can eat, I can sleep, I can do whatever I need it. But the results will come according to the situation. I can stay home, I can be safe as possible and everything, but any of the circumstances, I might can get a COVID. But I cannot control the outcome, right? I can control the process. So always remember the process is within me. Outcome will come along the way. All right, okay? And the last, don't forget to take care of yourself. So CWPE and the six step AA, accept, analyze, all right? Don't do it again, do it differently, all right? Don't repeat your past mistakes and then be open with the results and take care of yourself. So that is the compromise of my sales of the, the takeaway for our audience, actually. Sorry, I really love how, <laughs> how structured you put it. You know, it's so easy to to follow that flow. Um, I mean, easy as as in listen, but to do it, um, uh, that's a different story. But I, I love how you summarize it and how you compress it in, in a very structured manner. And... Uh, I would say that my takeaway from that is self-care. When you put self-care in yourself, um, that love and that energy, it overflows to others around you. So when you, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of taking care of yourself and taking care of others, right? To stay resilient. Okay. Um, thank you if, so if much. If you want to start that. first, you always start with the grow, grow mindset. That's it. The takeaway message, just step with the grow mindset. So see in a different perspective and then you can move forward in any matter of the life, all right? Okay, so right. all the best. Right, I, I really feel like, you know, I'm talking to my psychologist right now. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, uh, Aruna. That was really thank insightful. You. That was really wholesome, I would say. Yeah. So I think I wouldn't thank want you. to waste more time. Uh, let's go on to yeah. the next speaker, Ms. Wani Ardi. She's a writer, a performer, an advocate and founder of MRKH Malaysia and also MRKH Nusantara. 
and her topic is also quite interesting uh, on a very, very, very personal level. Uh, it's called uh, The Art of Letting Go and Letting God. So, hi, Wani. Uh, I've not met hi. you in person. Yeah, I've not talked to you in person yet, but uh, I've heard so much about you. Maybe you want to um, share a bit about yourself <laughs> to everyone? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Wani. So, as uh, Rita has introduced me, I am the founder of MRK Malaysia and MRK Nusantara. So, for those who don't know what is MRK, it's actually a condition, a congenital disorder, where uh, females were born without uh, uterus, uh, without vagina, um, no period, uh, no pregnancy, and with abnormalities in kidneys and bladder, heart and skeletal, as well as hearing. So this rare disorder happens to one in every 4,500 to 5,000 women all around the world. Yep. Okay. Um, wow. That's um, something very personal. Um, you know, yep. um, <laughs> it, it, I mean, just by you telling the statistic is... is it's very rare that, you know, you would feel someone you know is experiencing that, right? So if you don't mind, yeah. can you share a bit a bit about your personal journey and when you founded MRKH uh, Malaysia and also MRKH Nusantara? Uh, okay, so I founded MRKH Malaysia in 2014. Um, and to be honest, my intention at that time was quite selfish because uh, that was the year when I quit my lecturing job. I was a lecturer for about seven years. So I was so used to giving back to the, to the society. Um, I was so used to educating people, um, you know, sharing things and things like that. So when I quit my job as a lecturer, I felt um, left out. I felt a bit lost. Um, I felt like my worth in this society has lessened somehow. So I wanted to do something that allowed me to um, give back to the society. And I was thinking of uh, this syndrome because, you know, being a right hand performer for almost 20 years, um, I'm so used to being on stage, but the moment I have to speak about this very personal condition, um, it feels like I have to start from zero in terms of self-confidence, in terms of my self-esteem. So I thought, you know, um, I think this is something that the society needs to know about, uh, more people need to know about, and that's why I started MRK Malaysia. Honestly, uh, it felt very selfish. Uh, it was my nafsu to boost my ego, to be honest, you know. Uh, but then, um, after a couple of years, I realized that um, this is a real job and this is hard work. And this can actually help people and help myself in return. Because um, I, I grow so much um, from, you know, being a founder of a support group, uh, a safe space for what um, that started with just two members and now over 200 members. And I realized that um, it allows me to feel empowered. Uh, it allows others to feel empowered as well. And it allows me to help people, to help myself. Um, I realized that peer support is so, so important. And I only realized this um, because before I started MRK Malaysia, I was part of um, a support group for MRK women in the United States. And that was my very first time talking, even though just online, like what we're doing right now. But during that moment, it was my very first time looking at another person with the exact condition as me. And it felt so empowering. Like all my life, I thought I was alone. All my life, I thought um, I'm the only one who's, you know, not having um, uterus, not having vagina, not having period and all, and all that. And then suddenly I'm looking at someone who has the same condition as me. And just from that experience alone, um, I felt so empowered. So I decided that, you know, I want to give the same feeling to uh, other MRK girls in my country. And yeah, so far we have... Um, we have grew from MRK Malaysia to MRK Nusantara, whereby uh, we also have members from Singapore, Indonesia, 
and Brunei. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Um, uh, I think uh, just like you said, you know, you you went to a support group uh, in the US, and you actually found someone who shares the same journey as you do on a personal level. Yes. Um, so when you bring back here, um, how was it? I mean, it, was there any misconception from the women in our society? And how is it in your personal capacity that you overcome this with your resilient mind, your physical and emotional energy? Uh, definitely, because um, uh, compared to the support groups in Western countries, we in the Asian countries, we have our own, you know, um, our own culture. We have very different background compared to those in Western countries. So we have our own stigma, we have our own superstitions and things like that that we have to deal with. Uh, we have different sets of belief and values, you know. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's very important for me to find peer support within the same culture, the same background, or at least the same region. And I realized that in Malaysia, the biggest misconception, uh, some of the biggest misconception is that uh, motherhood only happens through pregnancy like the moment you're unable to get pregnant or the moment uh you have infertility uh you immediately set in, in your mind i'm not gonna be a mom forever i cannot be a mom forever uh which is so wrong because i believe i personally believe that um there are so many ways for you to experience motherhood and i believe all women are mothers including women who prefer to be childless why because we all have maternal instincts we are either mother to our kids or mother to our nieces and nephews mother to our friends who need um, you know uh, shoulders and uh, extra shoulders extra ears uh, we are mothers to our plants you know our cats our dogs women are mothers uh, whether we want it or not it's it's in us it's in our nature you know the fact that we are so emotional, so sensitive, so alert of our surroundings makes our maternal instincts, you know, more than paternal instinct. This is something that I honestly believe. So, um, having said that, I must also stress out that marriage and having children is not the only form of happiness. This is another misconception. Marriage and having children is not the only form of happiness. There are so many forms of happiness. These two are just one of it. So um, I realized that women who experience infertility, they feel like that condition is the end of the world because they have set in their mind that marriage and having children is the ultimate achievement in life, you know, which is not right, which is not right. And um, I also, um, if you allow me to speak on um, another sensitive issue, which is sexual health, um, a lot of women, a lot of men uh, believe that uh, sexual intercourse is the only way to have uh, a healthy sexual life uh, and that is also a really big misconception you know um, to have a very healthy sexual life uh, sexual health intercourse is not the only thing like for us american women we are born without vagina we can have vagina after treatment after um, surgery but even if we don't choose to do all that there are so many ways you can explore relationship, you can explore intimacy. So these are the things that we should be open to talk about. So we have to fix our attitude towards speaking about gender, towards speaking about sexual health, sexual reproduction, because we are usually afraid of things that we don't know. And unless we talk about it, we will remain in ignorance. True, true, that's true. Um, yeah, to know is to love, correct? And another yeah. phrase that I really like is, uh, you know, to, to let go and to let God. Um, so how do you actually master to let go and to let God? And, you know, I and have your... not. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do you master that? Because it's a personal journey. And, yes. And yeah, it, it's, it's an inspiration, actually. It's an inspiration to men and women out there who, you know, who goes through a similar journey but they don't address it like you and how, how do you advise them to stay resilient to sustain that positivity every day 
Um, uh, to begin with, it is not my place to advise anyone because I am still learning. I have not mastered the art of letting go and letting God. But um, I would suggest that uh, always begin by acknowledging what you can change and what you cannot change. Um, what you have control over and what you don't have control over. And also acknowledge that um, before strength, you have to go through um, moments of weakness first. There's no way that you can go straight to, you know, feeling confident and all that. Like I always um, tell my friends and tell myself, uh, keyakinan tak terbina semalaman. You know, self-confidence is not built in a night, you know. Uh, it takes time. I acknowledge that and embrace that and um, focus on what we have instead of what we don't have. Um, and it's so important to get professional help, like what Kak Ngas said. Uh, I, um, I myself, uh, I got professional help and it's also important to um, embrace the fact that support does not have to come from your family or your best friend. Support can come from other forms as well because um, kita kena faham orang yang tak faham kita. You know, unfortunately, sometimes kena macam tu. Kita kena faham orang yang tak faham kita. So uh, sometimes uh, our parents they don't have the capacity to support us merely because they were not born in that generation with all that awareness and knowledge, you know. So I think it's unfair for us to judge our parents like, why are they not being caring of my mental health? Why are, not being care why are they not being caring of my condition? Why, why don't they understand my struggle with my, uh, you know, gender issue or sexual issue? They were not born in that generation. So it's, it's our responsibility to break that chain. It starts with us. We have to break that change and that's why we have to talk about it and go find support uh, from people who actually uh, love you, understand you. I bet as women with all of our senses and instincts, we already, we already know which kawan can support us and which kawan cannot support us. Which kawan will always come up with toxic positivity like Ala bersyukur lah, you know. Uh, ala think of other people. Other people got, got it worse than you are, uh, you know. Like, ala chill je lah, relax, you know. We know, we already know that friend and we already know other friends like what uh, Anita said. Okay, okay, you cry. Yes, yes, you curse. Let it all out. So, we stick to that friend when we need that kind of support. So, don't feel, um, don't feel, um, what do you say, lemas mangat or don't give up, don't feel hopeless when you cannot find the support that you needed from your closest people. It doesn't have to be from your closest people. Right. Wow, that was really empowering. Um, you know, coming from yourself, your personal journey, that personal energy from yourself. Um, again, not many people understand what you went through or what you're going through right now, you know, and, and what you're constantly going through. But that was really empowering that, you know, it, it, I, I love how you put it that you have to understand people that doesn't understand you. You know, it, that's that's really empowering. And um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing your personal journey, Wani. Um, thank you. Thank I think you for having time, me. Yeah, next time we have can have our separate conversation, right? So, uh, <laughs> Because uh, we're also running out of time right now. So I, I wouldn't want to waste time and we want to call our final uh, speaker for today. Someone who have, I've interviewed before, uh, a very sweet and warm lady, Miss Simar. She's the founder of Glamour and Purpose, um, an international public speaker and NASM personal trainer and also a sports nutritionist. Right. So uh, the last topic will be very interesting because it's about um you know um what she does best which is yoga breathing exercises for mental health hi simar welcome to the show how are you hi hi rita i'm good how are you thank you for uh, having me here <laughs> thank you for being on the show with us 
So, okay, let's just uh, jump straight into the topic. Um, why do you think actually, you know, because we are, we are talking about mental resilience, we're talking about mental health and all the things, but why is mental health and awareness important nowadays? Oh my goodness. I mean, I think we all know, right? Um, at the moment, more and more people are dealing with anxiety, stress, even children. Like I, I actually have people that I know who's, or who have teenagers who have severe depression and are suicidal. And I feel like this is something that has become such an important topic because, um, because like more and more of us need that support. And uh, even from everything that everyone else has shared, I think that's very clear how important mental health really is um, because of what everyone's dealing with really. Right, right. And and when we talk about yoga, how does yoga actually assist with mental health? I, I've never tried yoga, um, to be honest, but um, I can see that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's with slow and um, with, with different, different poses. I believe there's for every pose, you have a, a reason or an objective that you want to meet, right? So how does actually yoga assist with mental health? Okay, so when it comes to yoga, it's actually uh, asanas are just one limb of yoga. There is eight limbs of yoga, right? So part of that is pranayama, which is breathing exercises, and there's meditation, and there's asanas. When you're talking about asanas, you just have to think, like even Tony Robbins talks about this, that your the way that you hold your body can actually change your emotions. You know, motion changes emotion. So when it comes to yoga, all of the asanas, they are designed to bring your body in alignment. So a lot of us, we we sit like this when we're sitting and working on our laptops and our posture is not necessarily correct, right? And because of that, a lot of that blood flow actually doesn't go to the vital organs and it impacts our digestion, our gut health. It impacts our brain because that blood flow is not uh, you know, happening the way that it should be. So yoga, typically what it does, there's this example I heard of which made so much sense to me and it's so practical. You know, back when I was growing up, we used to, we didn't used to have smart TVs. We used to have these TVs and then there was the antenna up on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and if the antenna was, you know, if there was a big wind or a storm, the antenna would move and suddenly on your TV, it's like, <laughs> like this horrible sound, right? And so what you had to do was you had to go upstairs and then, you know, go to the roof and turn the antenna around and then suddenly your TV has that clear, clear picture. Okay, so it's the same with our body. When the antenna, when the alignment of the body is not right, then that picture, the mental picture is like, like so much stress, all of that stuff. But when you align, when you bring yourself in alignment, it's incredible what it does to you like to your mental health, to your mood, your emotions. If you want to just try this, um, you know, if you just want to try it just as an experiment, just sit for 10 minutes with your spine completely erect and you will feel the difference in the way that you feel in your emotions. It's incredible what would happen to you if you were to do that. You just feel so much better. You you can't be and try smiling. You just can't be sad or upset or angry when you're smiling because all of these things, the way we hold our body, the way our facial expression is, all of it is constantly sending a message to our brain about how we are feeling. If you think about it, when you are sad, you will hold your body posture a certain way. And if you haven't noticed that before, you're going to do it now because I've told you, right? <laughs> when you're angry, your body posture is different. So when you're angry, typically your jaw will be really like, you know, 
you'll really lock your jaw and your body posture is different. So your body, your brain understands postures of your body and those emotions are aligned with those postures, right? That's why when you start to do the yoga asanas, daily, daily practice or weekly practice, it can completely change the way that you feel, the way that you move, the way your emotions, your ability to react to situations also changes. And that's the beauty of it. Even, even if you think about like when you're in a yoga pose, right? One of the big things that you learn from yoga is sitting with discomfort. So for example, if you're in the warrior one pose, right? You stay in that pose a few seconds more than you can bear, right? When it gets really uncomfortable, that's when you want to stay in that pose for just another moment. And that also gives you that in your life, when you start to do this practice in the way that it's designed, right? When you start to do that, sitting with discomfort, it actually creates, it trains neural pathways in your brain. So that next time when you are in a situation that is very stressful or, and, and you typically would run away or, or you would do something, you would get a drink. There is like an action that's connected to that anxiety or stress response, right? Doing that practice, practicing yoga and, and practicing sitting with discomfort gives you the ability it creates neural pathways in your brain that when you are then dealing with that kind of discomfort you will have the ability to just stop for a moment and assess how you want to react and sometimes that's all that you really need right um uh can i say that actually you must listen to your body because you will know, you know, your ability, the limit it, that you can do. But how about for some people who can't? I mean, maybe they have some difficulty in moving and erecting their body straight, you know, because, um, you know, the speakers now, they are telling me, telling me that, you know, oh, I'm going to sit up straight right now. I'm going to do yoga tomorrow and all these things. But how about for some people who have that difficulty? How, how do you manage? Um, or is there any other way besides yoga that, you know, you can use another way for, you know, to, for mental health besides yoga. So when you're taught, when you say that this person can't move, is it that because they have a, a physical disability or is it that their muscles are so tight that yoga becomes very difficult for them to do? Um maybe okay take for example myself um mm. i have um i have some injury in my knee you know i have uh, some difficulty you know when i go up the stairs or when i try to uh, squat you know um that is there another way that i can do besides yoga or or does yoga mm. actually help to um you know even though i have that difficulty with my knees does yoga also help or is there any other way that I can do? Yeah, so definitely yoga can help with any kind of discomfort, even with knee health, right? It can help. And obviously there are asanas that are contraindicated for people that have knee issues or any other. If you have back pain, back issues, there are asanas that we will not suggest that you do. And then if, if you feel like you want other solutions, I actually have this um, this thing. It's called a foam roller. Oh. Oh, okay. This is I very, yeah, this is amazing, especially for people that deal with um, a lot of uh, really tight muscles, things like that. And the way to use it, because a lot of people just roll on it right? The, the right way to use this is to actually, when you are, when you find a really um, tender spot on your, say, if you have knee pain, you would typically want to say, if this is your knee, right? That's your knee joint. You would typically want to do foam rolling around here, 
and on the other side, right? Because the muscle mm -hmm. will be very, very tight around here if it's a muscle issue, if it's uh, an actual joint issue, that's a completely different thing, right? But if it's a muscle issue, then typically it will be tight around here and here. So you would lie down on the foam roller on your side and tighten up your core muscles and then actually stay on the tender spot for 30 seconds. And that's it. And you will feel the difference within a week and you'll be able to do a lot more. You'll have a lot more mobility. And then again, with yoga asanas, um, obviously don't do the ones that are really contraindicated for say, for example, knee pain in this situation, but do others. Because like I said, yoga is not just a workout. It's actually all of the asanas are designed to um, bring your body in alignment and also they stimulate your hormonal glands, which is so important. And, and given that this is a women's forum, I can say this, that when your hormones are working well, your mental health is also working well. So that is so important, right? <laughs> right, that's true. Um, when you when you how you explain about yoga, it sounds like yoga is just like you say. It's not just a form of exercise, but it it's actually very empowering. It empowers the body, the mind, and empowers the soul. You know the the environment that you put yourself in when you do yoga. So uh, having said that, maybe you can show us some techniques on breathing, or you know uh, techniques that we can adopt every day. Hmm. Yeah, so actually breathing uh, exercises, pranayama is a really big part of yoga. And uh, one of the things why it's so powerful for mental health is that when you're doing different breathing exercises, it actually activates your parasympathetic nervous system. So our sympathetic nervous system is designed to actually, that's the one that we are using when we're active, we're doing things, so that's your sympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system is to relax your body. So when your parasympathetic nervous system is functioning well, you sleep better, you are more relaxed, you have better ability to deal with stress, uh, stressful situations, right? So that's why there are so many different types of breathing exercises. And uh, today, I'll actually teach you one that is very uh, easy. It's very quick to do. So you literally need right. five minutes a day. And uh, what it does, this one is literally, it gives you instant relief, instant. And you have to try this, especially when you are feeling these things, right? Instant relief from anger, anxiety, stress, any kind of, uh, you know, that mental uh, cloudiness that's happening. And it actually helps you concentrate right away. And also it helps you lower your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So for people that have high blood pressure because of stress, this is something that you should be doing every single day. And it is so easy. You're going to love this. So this is how you do it. You sit with your spine erect. Like I said before, your that antenna, that alignment has to be there, okay? That's why in meditation and when you're doing breathing exercises, if your spine is not erect, then you are not going to get the full benefit, all right? So you're going to sit with your spine erect. When you breathe in, you're going to breathe into your stomach, okay? So you can, you can actually, when you breathe in, breathe deeply and let the air, feel the air flow into your stomach. And then when you breathe out, feel that coming out of there, right? So this one, the one I'm going to teach you now is called Brahmari. So this is a humming V breath uh, breathing technique. And what we're essentially going to do is we're going to close our mouth gently and we're going to make the sound of a humming V. So very low and in your um, throat, you're just going to do sort of like if you closed your mouth and tried to chant om right so you're just gonna do so that's it's very very uh it's going to be smooth 
right? You're going to take a deep breath in and you're going to do this smoothly. And you're going to, you can do five to nine rounds. Um, if you have high blood pressure, you can do more rounds. I would not suggest more than nine rounds in a go because even though it seems like it's such a simple thing, this breathing technique is very, very powerful. And if you keep doing it for a very long time, you uh, you can also feel discomfort. Another thing, don't do this if you are dealing, if you have a sinus attack or if you have ear infection, okay? So when you're doing this, you will feel, you want to feel the vibration in, in the front of your skull, okay? And keep your hands, palms facing upwards on your lap. Okay, so let's start. So close your eyes, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, make the sound of the bee. One more time. One last time. And slowly take a deep breath in and out and open your eyes with a big smile. Feels good. So, yeah. Feels good. Feels good, right? Yeah. This is instant calming down of your mind. And you can do this technique early. In, you get the best benefit early in the morning or late at night, especially if you have trouble sleeping. You know, sometimes our mind can be so chatty at night. Just when you want to go to sleep, you can actually sit and do it nine times and just very slow. And you'll find that you will sleep so much better. And that's because it, again, activates your parasympathetic nervous system. And that kind of breathing technique also reduces the cortisol levels in your body because it sends a, when you're breathing so deeply and so slowly, it sends a message to your brain that you are safe. And when that happens, the cortisol, that stress hormone that we have, it actually reduces in the body and you can sleep so much better. Right. Wow, that was really good. Um, I think our panels will also agree with me. That was a really good session. Um, I think sometimes uh, you, you just need to absorb that energy and let it out slowly you know you, you feel calm and feel better and yeah that was that was really great Sima thank you so much I think we are running out of time um I just would like to ask if there's you know I would like to open questions for our panels if do we have time Joanne do you have time for any questions for any panel for our panels yes Do you have any? Any res? Uh, okay, no questions. Uh, any response? Okay, wait. I can't see. Oh, this is from Deep. From your sister. Such a great breathing technique. I will try it for sure. Great event today. Thank you all, amazing leaders, for creating such an amazing event. Hi, Sita. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we're really happy that you join us. Hi, Alin. Oh, that's for Sima. <laughs> Thank you, Wani, from Alin. Hi, J. Thank you for joining us. And Shafina, Fatiha, Alin, Lily. Wow. Deep. 
Alin, Anita. <laughs> My goodness, we have so many comments. We have so many responses. Amazing squad projects. Thank you. Thank you, Zaila. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Gurit No. Wow. Thank you, Ika, for joining us. Okay, I, I, I can't keep up. There's just too many great comments. Answer, yes, okay. Will this be, um, uh, Joanne, will this be featured in, um, you know, in the website or, sorry, in, in Facebook? Hi, Farah, thank you for joining. Okay, great. Okay, all comments are from Facebook. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Um, wow, I, I, I really had a good session. Um, I think um, if our guests, our spectators, our joiners, we have any further questions, I think they can drop us a question, a comment. Uh, you know, you can DM us at uh, our Facebook if you want to reach out to our speakers. You, you know, by all means, we have tagged them in our Instagram, in our Facebook. You can follow them on their YouTube. Okay, we have, um, you know, our five amazing speakers all on one platform. Thank you so much, ladies. I, I, I feel like it has been a really great evening with all of you. Thank you so much for being here and, you know, sharing your personal, professional stories. I, I feel very inspired, actually. And feel that, you know, even though the situation that we are going through right now, I think we can do this together. We can support each other and, you know, we inspire others as well. Thank you so much, ladies. And before I, I wrap up, I would also like to mention on our sponsors, I would like to uh, say a big thank you to Alpine Integrated Solutions, Virtual Life, Anytime Fitness, Sunway Putra Mahalaja, just to show you guys um, some of the sponsors. You know, they provide us with a seven-day free trial. We got um, some, you know, facial masks. And from Profit, Protein Cookies. Okay, wait, where's the camera? Yeah, Protein Cookies. Thank you, Profit. We have Fit Jar. Okay, can you guys see? Fit Jar has amazing salads. Okay, and chia pudding and you know, all these goodies. It's, it's all healthy food. Okay, can you see? Thank you to Kuli Hat. Um, I'm holding up Simar's gift actually. Simar's, this is for you. <laughs> You will get it posted to you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Simar is not in Malaysia. She's in Indonesia. Thank. Uh, this is for you, Simar. Okay, this is from Kulihat. Um, and we have from from Miss Hair Care, Kokomin. I personally tried this on my hair. It's it's really refreshing. It's really good. It's um a serum infused hair mask. And it smells really really nice. Hair. It's really good. It's really good. You should try it on your scalp. So thank you so much to all our sponsors. Thank you for supporting us, for supporting this event, for supporting this, um, this I would say, a, a mini chit chat on mental resilience. And I would also like to uh, mention on our future plan, which we will have um, our Kluang. If, if MCO is lifted, we will do a physical event. If not, we, will, can, we can have a virtual event like this. We will have invitation of Indonesian athlete speakers as well, and also Women and Wellness, which is also a virtual event, which we will have speakers from Canada, Singapore, and Malaysia. It's going to be fun, which we will continuously share on our uh, Instagram and Facebook. So please don't forget to tag us, you know, Women Empowerment. Believe in yourself and living a good life. So please tag us, uh, follow our speakers, all our lovely speakers here in this box here. And uh, thank, thank you, you to much. you, Rita. You did such an awesome job. Oh, you did. Yes, thank you, Rita. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank, thank you for making it easy for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that, you know, um, everyone enjoyed it. Um, you find it engaging, you find it insightful, educational, and very wholesome. So if we didn't manage to capture your uh, answers or capture your questions or, you know, if you wish to drop 
further questions or to our awesome speakers, to myself or to any one of us, just feel free to drop your DM at our Instagram and Facebook page and we will try our best to address them, okay? So thank you again, ladies. Hope this thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, everyone. Thanks, Suresh. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Yay.